So last we left off, this this troop of adventurers having lost a friend, avenged a friend, and really setting off to discover what the next wave of mysteries before them were worth pursuing, uh, decided to follow one thread that was mentioned by Lord Eric Astaroth uh, to the Dreamscape Theater, where apparently a series of disappearances he had heard rumored were occurring or had occurred in recent weeks around the establishment. Gathering your things, you headed further into the core spire of Drusar to the Dreamscape Theater proper. But as you all have your seats, uh, it seemed that Dorian was pulled aside. Somebody requested a conversation in which an individual named Cyrus made themselves uh, seen and a brief, intense conversation ensued in the stairwell beneath before you returned to the box seat as the show was about to begin. And so here, within the steadily darkening interior of the Dreamscape Theater, you have a few moments to prepare before the performance of the afternoon. <clears throat> who was it? Hmm? Who, who wanted you to come down? Oh, I, I um... Oh, that's right, it was a patron. Yeah, yeah it was just um, someone who recognized me from a show and. We just chit-chatted for a little bit. I used the restroom, and I'm excited to see uh, the, the flying lauders, was it? Mm. I think it's otters. Uh, like the... <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I heard. They it's, just throw it's... them around the stage? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Let's hope. <laughs> Quick insight check on that. <laughs> it's... At this point, the curtains begin to steadily open as the music from the pit below begins to pick up a bit. And with that, you can see the audience begins to hush as performers begin to come to the stage, you can see what looks to be a troop of about six acrobats begin to emerge and bow. But everyone prepares <laughs> as they begin to release themselves into a flurry of flips and backhand springs and tosses into the air, a brilliant display of physical prowess. Back and forth across the stage, you're waiting for the moment where they collide and they do not, it seems, they do not. <laughs> it, goes, it goes pretty damn well. There's a few moments where you find yourself clutching the wood on the edge of your chairs, uncertain if this is safe or going to end poorly. As they finish for their bow, you can see their mouths moving in unison as this low chant that's being spoken and sung amongst them is the other half of their performance. Oh, this is it's weird. Now, now this is, feels like they're summoning something. With that, you watch as the, the energy begins to rise, and as they're doing this, the song changes. Now they're vocalizing a harmony, and as it progresses, it's you can't help but feel enraptured by this combination of physical capability and musical prowess. And nothing bad happens. It's going great without it. <laughs> but the energy of them climbing is palpable as they leap and swing and grasp and spin. Not so great. <laughs> One of them misses the swing. <laughs> Under the wood. <gasps> There's a pause. The other performers turn and look. They get up. Oh, into a display of oh, arms out. Oh. Oh, big cheers, big cheers. And as they're cheering, they bow and bow and quietly exit the stage, <laughs> holding their back. A few moments pass beyond what would have been roughly a 25 to 30 minute performance. Uh, you watch as a half elf man comes out onto the stage dressed in impeccable tails with broad shoulders that come to an extravagant point that curve ever so slightly at the edges this kind of deep blue velvet with what looks to be almost like a, a leopard pattern interior that just drifts past the back of his outfit a large smile and this this toothy grin that he wears 
uh, you see his dark complexion and amber hair that is slicked back slightly to one side, and this pencil mustache that glides just over the upper lip. And he steps out. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello! Hey. We don't think you're supposed to. Uh, hello. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this performance of Kendra's Flying Larders. Um, there are no refunds, but have a wonderful night and uh, hope to see you again. A good night. And he exits the stage. There's a few claps That's and a weird some way to whispering, <clears throat> something. Something happened. Why did he specify no refunds? Feels like. That's very specific. I think the show ended rather early. Uh, uh, we head down? Mm hmm. Yeah, sure. okay. Yeah. All right. Walk up to that usher. Okay. You see Siren in the process of like picking up elements of uh, ticket scraps and he just kind of shakes his head for a minute before looking up. Hello. Um, we were just wondering what entrance it is we were supposed to use. Oh, the exit is. Oh, like... not, not the exit. No, the, the entrance to the backstage. Oh, uh, you're, there isn't. There, you. You're not allowed to go. Oh, we got special permission on yeah, account of uh, I, I think being just, such esteemed patrons. He, he said, uh, go to the proscenium, walk down the vom, and you'll be right there, something like that. Uh, I, I apologize, but I do should. Do you need to check with someone? I, I think I do. All right. Just wait, wait here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure. Uh, I'll go ahead and check. Well, that, that could have gone Should better. Should we just sneak in? Yeah, that's what I was hoping. Yeah, let's yeah, just, let's just sneak way. in. Is Should we make one more? We can create a distraction. I, I got it. Oh, yeah. That's and I cast good. Thaumaturgy. Sure. And then from uh, uh, backstage, you hear, fire! Fire! Everybody leave! Fire! Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> in a literal open theater. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cantrip. But it's enough to get a few people's attention. People immediately begin to get up and ugh, grab their things and usher up. Fire! Just move fire! It's a fire! Ah! They begin to exit with haste. We should, we should, we should move. We should move. There, we should, let's let's okay. Let's move on. onto the stage and backstage. Yeah. Even though a few people probably watched you go on stage, they don't necessarily give a shit because um, they're either worried about the fire or like how uncouth and just keep moving. Um, but you do scoot up into the wings of the stage, past the, the curtains, and immediately back there you can see there is a stagehand there. It looks to be some of the performers are in the process of kneeling and helping uh, kind of get cushions under the one that fell during the performance, who looks like they're injured, but it's not like grievous by any means. They're just like, ah, ah. Uh, they don't notice you. <laughs> We have a healer. Except for the half elf man who finished the performance, who, as you come through the curtain, is literally standing right there in front of you as you push through, puts a hand on your shoulder. I'm sorry. What are you? Oh, I'm a. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Fresh Cut Grass. I, I You're not supposed to be here. Oh, I was very concerned about um, your performer who had an injury and wanted to come back and uh, offer my services. I'm a bit of a medicine uh, bot. Well, I'm certain it wouldn't hurt at the very least. Um, make way, we have a curious self-professed healer who's arrived and kind of like guides you past, has an, and then looks over you. I'm sorry, this this is not an exit. You have to go the other way. Oh, of course, we're just, with him, we just had to accompany We're with the self-professed healer. We really you're, enjoyed the show. Yeah, too, you're lucky we had such esteemed boxes where we were seating that we, oh, we could see Oh, is that what the, you were seating? The view. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And you, like, has forgotten entirely about you and the right. harmed individual <laughs> and is now engaged in this, like, well, I, really, any time. There is a membership that you could actually have. <laughs> that will there it actually is. proceeds throughout the seasons. So what else <laughs> do you have uh, airing the rest of the season? Oh, uh, well, I have to go ahead and get my... Uh, repertoire out of my office here in a bit, but... Um, We'd love to accompany you. Certainly, that can be arranged. Uh, just a moment, please. In the meantime... You... I'm rolling over and I'll, I'll just assess the situation. Is this performer hurt badly? Uh, make a medicine check. 15 plus 5, 20. Mm. Taking a glance at how they're holding themselves, the physicality of how they're adjusting their weight to compensate. You get the sense that probably this might be a, uh, a 
a fractured tailbone. Ooh. Um, oh, uh, I, I, I couldn't help but notice that you're, uh, that you're injured. Um, do you mind if I, um, if I, if I touch you and, 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 and what are you? I, I, I can only help you. I, I promise. I, I'm designed to help you. Kind of looks to the other members, and, and this up close, you get a glance. You can see that there is a, a familial thread between everybody here. There definitely is. This is like a, a family of performers. Um, Stuvan said that I, uh, that I was welcome back here. All right, I guess if you can help. <laughs> uh, uh, this will only take a second, but I'll have to touch um, your your backside if that's all right with you. That is fine. Okay, just yeah. turn over a little bit. The nerves begin to definitely creep up into their expression. You'll be fine. <laughs> I will gently lay my hand on uh, on their their back and cast mm -hmm. Cure Wounds. That's not bad. Scrape for a busted ass. There was a sound. Uh, oh! oh. oh. And, it, and you watch it all. Everyone else all of a sudden reach forward and grab for you. Like, what the fuck are you it, doing? It, 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 before okay. they go, huh? Huh? Huh. Oh my goodness, that, uh, that's amazing. Well, there was just a little alignment issue that we had. Apparently, oh, wow. Uh, thank you, small metal thing. You have been very helpful. Oh, it, it was a fantastic show. I'm sorry you took a spill there, but before you were just incredible, flying through the air like that. Just oh. remarkable. Uh, we could actually um, maybe use your help for something since we're back here. I'm not sure what we could be helpful for, for, but tell me. We do need a little information. Um, there have been some rumors flying around about people disappearing from the theater. We're, we're just kind of looking into that a little bit. They all kind of glance at each other and get nervous. I cannot say I've heard of such rumors. We've only been in town for about a week. Uh, on that note, Orem is going to fade back while everyone's talking to them, and okay. just out of curiosity, check out the house again and see if anyone's lingering. I kind of fade back with Orem, just be a second set of eyes with him as well. You see most patrons leave, but one. Who in the far, far back, kind of to the side of the exit, you see one, uh, it's kind of hard to see this distance, but they're wearing a hood indoors. Lana, go up in the corner there. Ooh, see that creeper? spooky creeper. <laughs> it's right about then that they exit, after the hmm. other patrons. What do you think? Uh, probably nothing. Shall we follow? Well, when you put it like that. <laughs> Let's go. All right. As we leave, I just go send a message. Imogen, be right back. Be right back. <laughs> and I'll send back, uh, starting a connection. All right. Let me know for four minutes what's going on. <laughs> While that's transpiring, and Stuvan is beginning to approach the group, uh, Kendra's kind of talking. Mm. Goes, uh, the, your best bets in asking about any sort of recent things would be uh, the owner, and points over to Stuvan, who says, "Um, what about me?" Ooh. Um, they they are asking about. Uh, there have been disappearances, um, and so goes, That's preposterous. I mean, there are those people that leave the performances early because whether they are uh, unappreciative of the art we present, or drunkards, um, there have been disappearances. Kendra, take your family to rest. You've had a, a very intense past hour, uh, but well done, well done, everyone. Have a good night. Uh, we should talk. Oh, all right, we'll follow. In your offices? If you don't mind, just follow me, please. And I'll just uh, ask Laudna, where exactly were you going? I saw a creepy guy in the corner. Yes, they saw a creep. <laughs> they saw a creepy guy in the corner. Just giving him a look, see? Must <laughs> die. What did he look like? Can you ask her what? Uh, what did he look like exactly? He <laughs> had a, a really cool cloak. I saw someone. Earlier, mm. lurking in the wings. Oh, mm -hmm. you saw lurkers? I didn't know what to think of it at the beginning. I thought maybe it was part of the act, or I, I saw it and it just sort of, I don't know, um, it's distracted. And um, anyway, yeah, I, I think it was from someone from the Corsairs. 
Keep us posted, Lana. Will do. Kill a puppy. <laughs> Man, talking to her just always makes me feel so warm. And warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys begin to pursue carefully out of the chamber. The rest of you follow Stu Vaughn, mm -hmm. following into the interior. It's not a massive office by any means. If you wouldn't mind closing the door for me, please. Mm. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, you're asking about disappearances. Where did you hear about this? All over. Everybody's talking about it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everybody. <laughs> Twelve. Really? Everyone? I mean, I don't know everyone in this city. <sighs> just, I mean, I think that was more of a, a general statement. Where did we hear about it? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's come up a lot. I mean, honestly. <laughs> really, just a few uh, deep-pocketed strangers come and see one of our matinee performances and decide out of the goodness in their heart that they're going to look into some disappearances that apparently have been rumored by everyone. Isn't it? It is possible there are good people in the world. He sits back and thinks for a second, and you kind of take in the garish office. You can see all sorts of baubles and posters of performances past that are like plastered along the walls. The Calamity, an interpretive dance history of Exandria's greatest tragedy. <laughs> oh, I, want, I want to see oh, that. So bad. Yes. To Kill a God, the Scanlan Short Halt one man show. Oh. Like, it's. All manner of various various performance posters yes. from throughout the years have been collected and are on display. Look, I love it with you. If you are indeed here to help, it's not like you're going to do any more than the Wilders, Wardens have not done, and to just pressure me with questions. Yes, yes, we've had some disappearances. Don't know why, and I'm a bit frustrated that uh, Anyone I've spoken with has turned up with no answers, and a lot of eyes seem to be on me. How long have they been going on? About three weeks ago was the first disappearance of our uh, previous janitor. His name is Usha Breck. So, say, say that again one more time. Uh, our, our previous janitor, Usha Breck. We thought maybe he just quit. Maybe he decided to move on. So we didn't think anything of it. I replaced the position. Mm. It was fine. Two weeks ago, we had a performance troupe come through known as the Diamond Mask. One of the performers, a half-giant actor who played not the lead, but one of the supporting roles named Sino, then vanished. Within that same week, we had two patrons mm. vanish. Mrs. Eden Coldswell, and Mr. Amir Lioto. Both, well, often at the same box that you currently took up seats in this Ooh. night. Oh. Mm. One week ago, we had an occasional patron named Yaden. I do not know his last name. Not very well off. Occasionally scrounged up the money for one of our backseat tickets. Um, younger gentleman. He apparently vanished as well, and friends of his began to ask similar questions. So that's when I really began to take notice. And then three days ago, a young woman who was one of our rotating bartenders here at the theater, uh, named Lydney Osadala, she vanished. She's the most recent. So we're now looking at a total of six people who have disappeared in the period of three weeks, and I'm growing anxious and worried. All of these people that went missing, what type of show was it? A matinee, an evening, was it all sorts? Ah, uh, they all seem to be evening performances, if I recall. What? Or at least the disappearances and were, were they... noticed by the next morning. 
There wasn't a pattern, if that's what you're asking. It's a bit scattershot on which days it happened. And do you have uh, an underground storage in this theater? We do. Would you mind if we took a look around there? Very well. Uh, yes, I will notify the staff yeah. that you are here under my business to ask questions. And the staff would probably have better answers to your questions than I would, since I don't really oh. directly deal with most of these uh, individuals of interest. Do you have a... Um, uh, you run the whole ship. Do you have a stage manager or someone who oversees what's going on? I have uh, two individuals that help me manage the length and breadth of the establishment that are my right-hand helpers. There's Tefta. She handles most of the business and financials with me. And there is Ocampo. Ocampo? Previously a performer, but has now become one of my stage managers mm. and helps run the ship. All right. Thank you very much. Of course. <laughs> oh, oh, Door I, leave, I leave my headshot on the way out. <laughs> 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 just, Slide it under just, the door. Just, yeah. just 17, 17 more questions. Just 17 more questions. <laughs> Orm and Laudna, oh, the yeah. two of you have pursued into the entryway of the theater. You catch just kind of fading past into the night air at this time, which it is a night. Oh boy, oh. buckle up. Oh, oh, heard your boy. Um, uh -huh. You see what looks to be a similar Every time. figure heading off into the night air. Want to get a little air? Huh, sounds good. The temperature has dropped significantly for the night. It is a bit chilly, and there is a faint mist that is starting to kind of apparate along certain elements of the city around you. Unfortunately, oh. you lost sight of him. That's a big fat dud. Yeah, I'm stumped. You want to talk to Imogen? See where you're at? Yes, I'll check in with Imogen. I already check in with bathrooms. Oh, well, we lost him. <laughs> Whoever you are... they were. Pushed out from the, uh, the the chamber of your conversation, you hear the terrifying whispers of Laudna into your mind. Oh, we are about to tour their underground storage facility. If you would like to join us, oh, all right, mm -hmm. let's meet them downstairs. All right, as you gather up uh, <laughs> in the main theater chamber, you see stepping off the stage a uh, kind of human man in his thirties. Uh, Reddish brown skin, wavy black hair that covers over one eye and goes just past kind of the chin. Figures kind of steps off the stage. Uh, all right, so we're supposed to be showing you around, I guess. I'm Ocampo, I'm the stage manager. Oh, hi. Hi. What is, what are you looking for? We know there's been some uh, some disappearances around here. Oh, we're yeah, trying to get a yeah. bead on maybe some some uh, entrances that we don't know about yeah. or exits. You know about the disappearances, right? I'm I'm well aware. Yes. How aware? Well, I I I've worked with a, a couple of them, Th three of them if we include the performer, but that was a temporary time. Usha was a very very nice man. I uh, you know was worked here before I started. I've only been here for about three four years as a as a stage manager. I was a performer beforehand. Just kind of stuck around. Um, but um, he, he was very nice. He he was. Emphatic in keeping everything clean in and outside of the theater. He kept the surrounding streets clean. Mm. Um, he's just very into his work. Yeah, I, I didn't know too much about uh, Mrs. Caldwell and the other one. Um, you might want to ask Tefta. I know that she had kind of more of a rapport with them. I feel bad about Lydney, though. She was very sweet. She'd only been here for a few months. Bright-eyed young woman wanting to, you could see she wanted to be an actor herself, and this was kind of uh, what she thought was her shoe in. We're in basement storage, right? That's mm. what we just uh, Not the, yet. The, the you guys are kind of like walking and talking, talking as you go. Okay. Um, you're getting to that space, is like pulling out keys and the key ring and starting to situate. And goes, Did you see Usha or Lydney the night they went missing? Uh, I, Do you have any memory of it? I, I did, yeah. I think I did, yes. Do you remember where they were when you last saw them? Usha was just 
doing his usual rounds, cleaning the inside, cleaning the outside. It, it's it's kind of his business. And Lydney was at the bar. Lydney was at the bar. Um, she was she was very nice. She's a very quiet girl. Kind of kept to herself on her breaks. Where did she go on her breaks? I don't know specifically. I think maybe outside. She. I don't know for certain, but you could smell on her clothes sometimes. I think she. Uh, I think she enjoyed partaking in the burning of various uh, tobaccos. Oh. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> opens the door and you can see the staircase descends into a, a, a lightless expanse Ooh, this below. this is always the creepiest part of a theater. Yeah, 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 yeah. He goes ahead and reaches up and grabs a lantern and kind of like turns, and you can see the wick kind of light a bit and pulls the oil lantern down. So you descend, following into the and basement haunted. area here, and with the light that you can see curling from the lantern, <laughs> um, there are <laughs> large cases, like luggage compartments and, and locked boots that have Bits of costumes like spilling out on the side of where they were closed. Or I'm specifically yeah. looking for anything that is not look looks like it's been moved, disturbed, not covered in dust, and sitting there for ten years. Going throughout the room, you do not see any sign of such holes or exits or anything that would be akin to what you had previously encountered dealing with the shade creepers. Okay. Is there like a prop, a prop chest, or a? Or a there are a handful prop of prop chests around here. Yeah. I want something. <laughs> okay. Uh, you open up a chest and immediately glancing down inside, you can see what looks to be just piles and piles of white lace dresses. <gasps> <laughs> this is the most beautiful dress I've ever seen. I'm gonna take it. You notice that Ocampo has the lantern facing the other way and is like, I'm not entirely certain what you're looking for, uh, but you know, take your time. Uh, it's like on Doesn't you. notice anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Looking in a mirror. <laughs> uh, does not notice at all. Oh, that's oh cool. wow. Oh, nice. Oh. Are there any other uh, rarely used areas? Fly space? Uh, other oh, no. areas? Yeah, sometimes I'm told um, in the theater. Uh, uh, two performers might um, become amorous with each other and maybe sneak off to the to to somewhere uh, unseen so How they can canoe. That FCG. Oh, uh, this isn't my first day rolling around, is it? <laughs> uh, to go off your question, you're in that room. Ah. Um. Mm. Which, by the way, don't touch that table. Mm. Wait, That's why it was so wobbly. Oh. But as far as other spaces, like there, there are rafters above the stage. Um, there is, I mean, Tefta's in her office probably for the next hour or so. Let's go talk to Tefta. All right, I'll, I'll <clears throat> show you to her office. Okay, kind of knocks on it. Uh, Tefta, I have those visitors that uh, Stuvan said are to uh, ask questions about. And the voice inside goes, all right, let them in. <laughs> the door opens up on the inside. There is uh, an office that is decorated in uh, garish pinks and yellows. And you can see on this, not even a desk, but like a, a curved table, uh, an, an older gnomish woman uh, who looks to be, what would be the human equivalents of her 50s or so later 50s in this like curled, almost beehive hair that looks like it's, Bright, bright, vibrant red. How can I help y'all? Mm -hmm. Evening. Oh, hello. Handsome little boy. Come here. <laughs> I'm Tefta. Um, we understand that there's been some, and I'm sorry if this is a, a sensitive subject, of disappearances around the theater. Indeed, indeed. Very sad, very sad, very mysterious. Two missing patrons, that's gotta be a problem. Mm. Yeah, well, more than two. Three. More than two. Yeah. Three missing patrons. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know. He's a, he's a curious fella, but the, uh, if you ask me, it's not entirely unknown that uh, Miss Eden Caldwell and Mr. Amir were carrying on an affair. Miss Eden and <gasps> who? Eden and Amir. Mm -hmm. Is it possible they went off to have a rendezvous in the middle of the show? 
I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. This is where they came to meet up. In fact, often during intermission is when they would go ahead and uh, go someplace no one will find them. On the premises, you think, though? I imagine. We're not we gotta far find from all the it. So we have to find the bones. Now I don't know how not. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you mentioned this uh, Yarden. He generally picked up whatever the uh, the cheapest tickets were and negotiated his way to a uh, dirt poor seat, but uh, he got in trouble twice because I caught him uh, selling some kepper dust to some of our patrons. Kepper Kep- dust? Ke- Ke- mm. Kepper? Kepper dust, yeah. Kepper dust. And where would he go to sell? I don't know. Wasn't selling it in here. So three three of the vanished were into sort of illicit sneaky things. What about the others, the performers mm-hmm. and the janitor? Yeah, what do you know about Sino, who uh, came through? Sino, uh, Sino was a bit of a drunkard, if you ask me. Showed up to a few performances a bit uh, high on the sauce and uh, caused a few arguments when they first set up their performances. A loud confrontation the night that they finished his final performance before he uh, drunkenly wandered off. Last anyone ever saw them. Confrontation with who? The rest of his performers. Mm. And Lydney? Yeah, Lydney. Sweet girl. Didn't make friends often. Kind of just did her thing. She was a good employee. You could tell she was still kind of coming out of her shell before she disappeared. Sad. We got him on that secret spot. Sounds like everyone was loners, right? Everyone. Sounds like people leaving the theater. Yeah, finding gotta... something. Well, you got a lover's tryst. An entrepreneurial spirit. Someone going out to smoke. And an actor left in a huff. Is there a rooftop yeah. or a balcony? Or there's a... gotta be. There's at least there's... there's an alley. But that the access to that is backstage, so it would... Yeah. When the alley itself runs around the building, people can access it. It's true. You can exit from that point. We do have a rooftop, but that's inaccessible to anyone who doesn't work here, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Should we split up and go scour the the theater before the next show starts? I'm gonna check out the rafters. I, I'll All go right. near the the box. Got I'll him. check the upstairs restroom. All right. Check the other one. All right. I guess I'll, I'll go with you to the box, or I, I could check out the alley. Maybe get a better idea of the alley. Let the body yeah, I'll help. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help him check with the different boxes. Who's okay? Who uh, who's going to the bathrooms? Sorry. Um, yeah, sure. so all right. So you're going to which bathroom first? Upstairs first. Okay. You you head into the restroom, and you know, like a lot of the restrooms here, you enter, and there is a, a seating arrangement, but it is largely just a a hole in a tube mm. with a seat built around it. All right. It seems to, you know, have been recently repaired to a certain degree, but beyond that, it is a bathroom. I'm going to look in the hole. It's my yeah. turn. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> you find what you expect. Yeah. Uh, a tiny assassin. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is just a hole. Like, you know, like, like most of the restrooms here, they, they are just holes that progress deep we into rock and vanish. Literally shit out of one. Yeah. <laughs> While you guys are doing that, who's going to the box? I'm going to the box. Oh, All right. you're coming? Yep. You step back up to the box where you stayed. What are you looking for? I'm going to look for false panels in the wall oh, or God. curtain poles that open secret doors, or even if you tilt a chair back, it opens, it opens like a, a secret slot. door. <laughs> you do not pick up any sort of sliding doors or uh, interesting panels, and it seems like it's a fairly solidly built box. What you do pick up is where this, where you sit and face outward along the railing, it looks like there is, looks like scratches in the wood, in the interior. Where the scratches are, you get close, and one of them points outside. One of the scratches points outside? Or it, it, it's, like it reads, arrow? it reads outside. Someone left sure. a message for someone else to receive, maybe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, outside, so maybe. This could be where um, Amir and Aiden, maybe one of them. You left know, a message for the other. Left a message for the other. Yeah. So they went outside. So they went outside. So from here, let's mm-hmm. let's figure out how they would have gotten outside. Maybe not through the front door. Maybe there's another way from here. So she okay, gets up. Okay, if I look. Where'd she go? If I look to the outside, which way's the outside? Well, from where you are, there is the spiral staircase that leads down 
Uh, it does connect to the hallway that heads towards the back and to where the backstage area was. Back let's and go. to the left? Back and <laughs> into to the, the left. left. Okay. Let's Sorry. go, let's go. Let's go that way. Okay. That so, feels like it's So we're, we're gonna discreet. retrace okay. those steps. As you guys are making your way there. Come on, Amir, let's go have an affair. <laughs> <laughs> you were going where? You to the alley. To the alley. All right, from which direction are you coming? With? I was going back through this, the door that we had gone through before, and I was gonna try to walk around the alley um, outside to see if I could find any Okay. Like grates or uh, entrances into the lower level, like the sewers or anything. Okay, and you're looking into the. Uh, you had described ladders and ropes going up into Correct. the rafters, so I'm going to get a little bit of a running start and sort of start flea jumping my way high okay. up into the. Table. You begin to head up into the mm -hmm. uh, rafters and begin the process of searching around. And kind of, what are you looking for? I'll, I'll scan the catwalks for any anything odd. I don't think I'll find anything, but I, I still will. But. I'll also look for any kind of like trap doors in the the ceiling of the theater that lead up and out. Good call. You don't see anything that looks out of the ordinary necessarily that would pertain to the the narrative that you're pursuing, Curly, in this. You do see there is one wooden ladder that descends on the far end of the catwalk that goes up to a hatch. And I just sort of jog Great. over to it and start climbing. I'm up, up on the roof. You're on the roof. And I'm just gonna look at the the streets. Uh, and get the lay of the land from up here, and watch for Imogen to appear, because I know where she's going. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna perch up here, okay, and keep an eye. Got it. All right, and you are heading out to the alley. Okay, so the go to the door that exits into the alley. Step out into the space. It's about twenty feet across from side to side, with a kind of divot in the road. We are looking out. It heads to the right. The alley continues to the street, but there is a secondary alley that offshoots and kind of heads inward, like a slightly smaller alley, it goes about 60, 80 feet back and then comes to a, a cul-de-sac end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm gonna send a message to Laudna. I found a dead end here in this alleyway. Mm -hmm. Could be something? <clears throat> Sounds promising. Uh, I'll light up my orbs and Walk down that direction. Okay. Ashton, mm -mm. let's get out of the shitter. Head to the alley. Fuck yes. What are you doing? Oh, uh, I'm down in the orchestra pit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look around. I'm pretty confident I didn't see anything, and I'm going to. Uh, I'll just hoist myself up onto the stage, okay. and uh, I think we'll make my way up. So, I'm gonna stop where I am and just um, open up my mind. You do sense a presence. A mind, though. You're not picking up any anything specific. It's like it's just static almost. You're not certain how to even interpret it. Yeah. Yeah. Right around this time, uh, you both step out into the alley. You can see now like kind of the paint pink glow to the left, where Imogen is kind of stepped off to this side alley. And right about that time, Ashton and uh, Laudna catch up to you. Oh, impeccably clean alley. What? There's something weird. Who keeps an alley this clean? Especially since the janitor's been gone for weeks now. I can hear something. It's just, I don't know what it is. It doesn't seem normal. As you all kind of move forward, uh, imagine you kind of step, and with your mind still open, the static gets a little louder as you begin to step deeper in the alley and kind of Flex your eyes for a second and glance up as you see uh, Ashton and Imogen both kind of inspecting the far back wall. And as they're inspecting it, you see the, the striations of the stone on the wall back split. <gasps> where an eye <gasps> appears in the what? space. Another section opens up slightly where you can see jagged points within and tendrils. <gasps> Found it! It's just a fucking wall that's been sucking people. Just eating people! people. Oh. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get the battle map ready. Oh. 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 Right it's been so long. Show me where I'm going. Oh, there's the alley! Yeah. Gotta use... Yeah. So, because this creature was unseen in its direction yeah. and the attack was sudden, it does get a surprise, surprise round. Surprise, motherfucker. Fuck. Mm -hmm. It is going to attack twice with its pseudopods. One against you. That is a natural one. 
Oh. Whoa. Oof. You like, it, it swings oh, out towards you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you glance up and just now notice right above you, the wall itself is shifting and quivering and you can see the mouth is opening. <laughs> I got it right this time. Uh, Quiver and shift. Yep. <laughs> and that is going to be a an 18 <laughs> against you, Lot. The pseudopod whips out and slams into you like a hammer. And you're like, Bah! But you're adhered to it. Uh. Oh, shit. And then it is going to hit. You're in. It missed you with a pseudopod. It's going to try and bite you. You just get hit with the. That is going to be a 24 to hit. Throw a fun time bat. Yeah. Uh, as the mouth don't the chomps mouth. into you, and you feel your shoulder and almost your neck to be consumed. Jeez. You try and pull yourself out, and as you pull your arm out, you feel the teeth breaking away, and you watch as the teeth shatter and then more oh, form behind it from where it was. It, and was... as you pull away, you're like that kind of hurt, and then shh, the. The saliva from the creature is now burning. It kind of hurt my ass. That really hurt. So. Um, you right. now see the semblance of the wall at the end of a hallway <laughs> is shifting away and bending. And there is actually more alley behind it. This creature had positioned itself near the edge and had prematurely become the end of the alleyway. You see edges of the wall are starting to curve away and peel as it begins to oh. Oh, no. slither. You see it's actually able to shift slowly in your direction. But the top of the round goes to Ashton with Orm on deck. What are you doing? Uh, I am raging. Help. And I am going to, I assume that there's a tongue uh, between, or like a thing uh, between Ladna and the mouth that's just kind of connecting right now, like a uh, Like a pseudopod that's, that's lashed onto her and yeah. kind of pulls her close, but she's now, she's right next to it. Like, they're, they're adjacent. I am going to try and go over and smash that tongue. I'm gonna walk over and give it a good good whack and see what happens. I'm gonna you back actually up. go and swing and you hit it and it gets stuck to it. And you're like, Ugh, trying to pull it away and you have to put a foot up to try and pry it away and you pull it away, but now your foot's stuck. And you look over at Ladna and it eventually managed to tear your foot free, but your turn is wasted. Um, all right, is that your turn? Yeah, it's my turn. All right, Orem, you're up with Imogen on deck. Okay, so I, I, run, I grab a dagger out from the back of my boot and run uh, and get in front of Fern and does it have eyes or is it all mouth? It has kind of one central eye right now that you can kind of see that's kind of peering out somewhat and then it vanishes, but it's mostly this massive mouth now that's just <laughs> So I shout, hey! And I chuck the dagger and aim for the eye. All right, so how much damage was that? Eight, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 damage 10. to it. You got it. Oh, that's Sounds good, good. awesome. That finishes your turn, Orm? That's it. All right, that brings us to Imogen with Dorian deck. <clears throat> Can I build off of what Orem just did? And as I see him fling the dagger mm -hmm. at the eye, I'm gonna at the same time try to cast blindness on the on the Ooh, eye. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So you go ahead and try, and you watch as you're about to release the spell towards an eye, and you watch as the eye, the the blade or the the, the attack that, that Orem completes impacts it, and you see it. The eye close up. The spell doesn't impact, and a secondary eye kind of like Whoa. opens up further up the wall and then vanishes again into the weird, shifting flesh like stonework. Uh, that brings us to Dorian's game. Yeah. Cool. I will run over. I will, I'll go to Fresh Cut Grass, actually. Hi. And uh, Smiley Day to you. Hi, Smiley, <laughs> smiley Day to you, too. Uh, <laughs> I've got a feeling we're going to be doing a lot of healing, and I'm going to uh, give them Bardic Inspiration. Who to me? This action first to you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Why, yeah. thank you. All right, that finishes your turn. It is now the creature's turn. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of slithers upward into the space, kind of holding Ladna there as it, the wall <laughs> moves forward. You hear. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. You watch near the mouth, it begins to swell. No. Nope. <gasps> <laughs> the mouth oh, opens right, a and cone sets straight forward up. this large globule of kind of greenish clear liquid. Oh, we all die right now. That I got a bad feeling. Explodes. Though. A little ways in front of it, just no. past you. Shite. Yep. Oh, no. I need Orem, Dorian, and Ashton to make a dexterity. Oh, not, I have uh, advantage on dexterity. Now it's cool. Seventeen. Seventeen. You take fourteen points of acid damage. <gasps> what the living fuck? Whoa. Okay. Nine. You take twenty-eight, 28. points of acid damage. Oh my, oh my god. fucking god. Six. Six. You take twenty-eight points of acid damage. Uh, what the? And keeps kind of <laughs> shifting forward, its tendrils now emerging from the front and its biting mouth. Lumber. Ashton, you're up, warm, you're on deck. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. I'm going to run in and try and uh, get you loose again. Okay. So I'm taking, a, on, taking another swing. 
I think I might make it a reckless attack so I don't have disadvantage anymore. You can do that, yeah, I'll help. Uh, that's 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Already. Tripled. And I wish. <laughs> Six points of psychic damage. Okay, 16 points, to it. you got it. Uh, so as you go ahead and slam your hammer down onto the pseudopod oh. that's currently holding her, you would have to move around here to do so. Since she is, she as you backed up, the creature moved forward and it's kind of between. So you had to move around 15 feet to get to her, mm -hmm. slam and destroy it. And I'll say, like, with with that much damage, it, I would say it's just enough to destroy the pseudopod, which means you are not currently grappled. A hero. Imogen, you're up with Fern on deck. I'm gonna look towards Laudna and see how fucked up she is, and my eyes are just gonna flash white. And I'm gonna flare up my hands and hit it with a witch bolt. Okay, level one, level two? Level two. Level two, go ahead and roll to attack. Cox. Ultra Cox. Oh, Maybe like if you didn't have 14,000 shut up. on your tray. 19 plus six. As it's shifting forward. <laughs> But that, that little cluster where it's emanating is just focused and holding. <laughs> Finishing your go, that brings us to Firm with Dorian on deck. Okay, this is a little wild. Let I like wild. Just, I like wild. Just... All right. Sorry. Um, I'm going to peek under my cape. Ooh. Hey, mister. <gasps> Are you ready to hop in? <gasps> Get in there. Okay, he's just going to take his <laughs> flame seed. <laughs> and he's going to. Chuck it into the <laughs> mouth of the, the eyeball. Yes, that's He's gonna a throw problem. a flame seed. All right, so you watch as Mr. leaps off of her shoulder as he does. You watch, Sorry, the, Mr. You, you watch this this tiny monkey that, that at this point, yeah. uh, aside from, from those who traveled here with Fern, has been just this little furry monkey that stays like hidden in her hair and underneath the cloak and occasionally emerges and screams. Now you watch <laughs> as it leaps off of the shoulders, suddenly <laughs> it bursts into flames around it and is now this like elemental burning monkey on the ground that just back, Boy. grabs a chunk of monkey flame oh. and Flames throws yeah. it over <laughs> at this giant mouth-covered wall. Unsanitary. Blame a duke. Well, just gonna yep. throw shit at the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, see see wow. Oh, you see what's in. Oh my god. Yes, that's exactly what she's doing. Come on, mister. It does manage to hit the wall, but it. this one unfortunately was not charged with the elemental fire and is literally just a smear of dookie. Oh. Oh. oh, okay, I give him a little scratch on his head. It's okay, it's okay. I'll get it next time. We'll kill something later. He died. Oh, Which, by the way, we didn't throw your axe last time if you wanted to, so go ahead and throw it now if you want to before your turn. Yeah, yeah, I think after I. <laughs> I see Mr. Fail and I'm like, I'll try to throw something, sure. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's uh, 18. <laughs> and it's like Add stuck it in the wall. Add it up. All right, it is now the wall's turn. Fuck me. It's gonna I'm directly in front of you. No. It goes. I wonder how far I can shoot. It's right there. It goes. Wait, what? With us? I can shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Onto the ground, right in front of it. Oh, oh no. splatters out. I need Ladna, Ashton, and uh, Orem to go ahead and roll we'll right Dex saves. Yep. So you've got bonus. Not I do have. Draw. I do have temp hit. Points. Twenty. Twenty. So you take uh, eleven points of acid damage. Ooh. Okay. Also twenty. Also twenty. Eleven points of acid damage. Twelve. Twelve. So you take twenty-three 20. points of acid damage. Okay. I'll take half of that shot. Okay. All right. And I take seven temporary hit points. You take seven temporary hit points. You okay. cannot get higher than seven. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Oh, okay. Kept me from rolling death saves. As it begins to push forward, it you try and get your shield in the way mm -hmm. and hit it and hold your ground and you feel your feet just so sliding it. against it. And so it's going to push you forward as it goes. Mm -hmm. You All of you begin to see the tendrils like and you see Orm being pushed back, shield in front, kind of partially adhered to the front of it, and mm -hmm. there's a little part of you that worries you're not gonna be able to pull yourself free of it now awesome. that you've met it, but Love it. you haven't reached that point yet. Love it. All right, that brings us to Fresh Cut Grass. Um, all right, I'll <laughs> lean out and I will fire. I will throw a bolt from my bolt thrower. Yes. Okay. That's a 1d8, which is five, plus I'll pump in the seven temporary hit punts. Nice! There's like a burst from the impact of the harpoon, like, a grapple point as it hits, and you see the, the holding of some sort of strange magical energy. Just the impact as you release the temporary hit points into it. 
Uh, I'll stay put and just kind of rock right back around the corner again. Okay. Burn, you're up. Okay. I'm going to clap my hands together. Mm hmm. Yes. And cast Thunder Wave. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Try to do it like, oh you know. It moves it back 10 feet, yeah. Does it pull that... our friends with it? I mean, I'm on it. Uh, Orem does get pulled with it. And what about me and the. Uh, am I grappled too? Yep. Uh. Uh, and so it, it, it drags them back, but then pulls them with it. Go. Finishing ferns go. Dorian, you're up. All right. Uh, straight down the chute, I'm gonna cast. Uh, I'm gonna cast chromatic orb. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, yes! Yes! Let's go, natural twenty. Oh, yes! All plus, right. Plus five, twenty-five. Let's go. Oh, praise the rolling I think God. I, I, the way I cast is um, I, I have to have a diamond. So mm -hmm. if you were to look closely at my chest plate, right in the center, you'd notice a little princess cut diamond. And I sort of classy flick it into my hand and catch it. Timeless. And it turns into this orb of electric energy. And I just give it the old Ooh. MLB throw as hard as I can straight down the center. Ooh. How do you want to do that? Was next. I'm so pissed. <laughs> well, just like I said, except ten times cooler. Yeah. So as you flick up the diamond and grab it and then release the orb, cool. what happens? Ooh, uh, it like uh, as I throw it, it just goes from this tiny little thing, gets a little bigger until it looks like a, just a tiny little orb. And as it shoots forward, it just gets faster and faster until it's almost like a like a fucking bullet, and it just goes. Dunk, right in between, right in the fucking iris of its eyes, <laughs> and sort of buries its way into its eyes slowly. Okay. Okay. As the as the, the wall is standing <laughs> there, all the friends being dragged in its mouth <laughs> open, you can see it's in the process of getting ready to stuff Orem into its giant toothy hmm. maw. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and a, a, as everyone has this look of despair and fear on their face, you watch as it just spins and crashes right into its eye, and as it impacts, the wall seems to lock and freeze. And you watch what seems like time everywhere else slows down, except for the one slight spin of this arcane bolt that begins to just corkscrew in and burrow into the eye. And as it does, it tries to close the lid, and as it closes, you can see the blue glow behind the flesh of the light that's getting brighter and brighter, at which point, <laughs> Arcs of energy begin to shock through it as blue lightning begins to just tear open gashes and sores across his body. You watch as it. and collapses into the ground. I don't. Don't you put for that fucking wall? <laughs> no, don't make a sound. Don't scream. No, don't do that. I hope it's the railing wall. Oh. <laughs> There's a brief moment. As you're all just kind of catching your breath in the silence of the night. You just hear all of your friends around you breathing hard. <sighs> and Dorian, you stand there clutching the diamond in your hand. Holy shit. Fuck, I hate acid. Uh, it's a scary wall. That's oh. nice. Wow. Nice renovation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Been relevant. Uh, rushes around the corner, right? And looks to you, oh. Dorian. He's like, what is, what is all the noise? <laughs> Wait, who is this? Who? Okay, uh, stage man. Campo. Oh. Oh. Theater. oh uh, I think we might have found your patron gobbler thing. It's, uh, it was, uh, Hard to explain. Uh, it was a wall that eats. Okay, not not so hard to explain. It was a wall. It was a scary wall. It looks over, and it's still there. Like it 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 still has its wall like <laughs> form in places. It's just dead. We we Blood broke up. the fourth wall. <laughs> 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 Oh, fuck you. <laughs> oh, Campo, looks at goes, fuck you. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> I'm gonna go get Stuvar. Uh, everyone okay? You okay? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> refreshments. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask. Beer, wine, medical Spirit attention, percent. anything that happens. Orm is full on planking face down on the cobblestone. <laughs> I just need an hour. Hey, 
What's going on down there? Oh no, who's this oh, now? You look over on the down the other side of the alleyway that leads to the road, you see two armored figures walking up wearing <laughs> familiar colors and garb mm. of the Wardens of the Wild. Uh, oh, great timing. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what was I supposed to mean? We He's were attacked. And they go up to it and start like, poking it, <laughs> stepping back. <laughs> 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 Don't do that. 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 <laughs> I know. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Go over and start kind of prodding it, at which point Stu Vaughn comes by and it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I am being notified that you have apparently, oh my goodness. Is it? It looks over to the to the to the, the wardens. Is it like yeah, it's dead. Mm-hmm. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. The wardens begin to ask questions about you know about the disappearances that they've been looking into for a while. And Stuvan's all Of course, you've all been extremely helpful, but it looks like we had things taken care of here, have we not? For sure. Yeah, yeah. But how does a thing like this yeah, who is some someone or, or something may have enchanted it to do this. The male halfling, who's the ticket taker, kind of steps forward a bit and goes, well, the, uh, you know, it was a few weeks back that general street repair that was being done here in the alley. Oh. Who was that? Yeah, who, who, who that? was doing it? In most of the, uh, any sort of official construction done in this part of the spire is overseen by the Treshy House Masons Guild. Uh, do these renovations occur on the same time as your first missing person? See, Stuban looks over at the Tekken Takers. Evan, is this true? Well, I guess so, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. And Stuban goes, it's fine. <sighs> no. uh, Wardens, I think we have this handled. If you wouldn't mind just writing up a report to do whatever it is you do when you take other people's credit and let your masters know that uh, things are taken care of and to stop peering into my personal effects. I am not responsible for this. Let's have a conversation in my office. You all, <laughs> no. now even more of you are here cramming into Stuvan's office. Like a couple of you have to kind of wait out in the hallway. You can't quite all fit in there in that <laughs> space, but Stuvan turns around in his desk. Well, this has been a strangely eventful night, hasn't it been? Um, well, for one, I guess, thank you for your curious minds and for being forthright in your intent. A rarity, it seems, in some spaces these days. Uh, I would hope that you are willing to speak on what transpired and defend the honor of the Dreamscape Theater for our lack of involvement directly with the deaths of these individuals. Sure. What are you going to give us in return? Oh, we don't need anything, really. We're fine. <clears throat> Memberships. He pulls a, uh, a small <laughs> case that oh. is currently closed and kind of sets it on the desk and scoots it across. I open it. It is filled with a smattering of gold and platinum. Mm. It says, mm. oh. Consider this appreciation for your hard work oh. and uh, an offering of friendship in, once again, ensuring that those responsible for this are taken care of by the authorities and not my humble business. Wait, but I, I thought, uh, I thought uh, uh, we would also maybe, uh, like Laudna said, get uh, free memberships as well for box seats. And box exactly seats for room. the season. Done. <gasps> <gasps> Have a good night and um, get out. <laughs> you all kind of carefully exit the back. You can see there's now four wardens or wilders that are in the process of inspecting it, like holding up parts of its weird uh, skin flaps to see like the stonework texture and like the weird combination of masonry and creature that this is. Uh, one of them kind of looks over and just notices you pass by and just gives a nod. I'm gonna go pull out a tooth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can I take more? Otherwise, they just pop right in. Let's try to take as many as I can. You get seven teeth. Woo! One of the wilders goes, hey, 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 hey! This what? is a crime scene! Yes, a crime scene that I made. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> As you guys begin to exit the alley towards the... Before we leave, yes, yes. Oh. same. Okay. I had one question. There, there were repairs that happened. Things uh, were replaced. Can I see, like, if there were new bricks, old bricks? What yeah. the fuck? Uh, looking around the interior here, there is no fresh meat. <laughs> oh no, they died. Who died? Or didn't. The contractors. Or, or they just didn't do the work. Or they, they didn't do any work, they just put the they thing put here. The thing. Um, you do see affixed to two sides of the creature, small devices oh, that are almost like attached. Here we go. What do they look like? They look almost like like half orbs, that are just kind of pressed with little like parts that dig into the stone-like flesh of the creature. Hmm? Have the guards are the have the guards noticed it? Oh. You're uncertain. The wilders are still kind of pouring over this and keeping an eye on most of the crew, and you manage to just find the right moment. Maybe it's a, a hint of your the extension of your consciousness that kind of just blurs, puts the blinders briefly on before you just grab it and pull. And once again, it looks like it was meant to heavily dig in and hold in place, but it gives no resistance as you pull it away. It's rather disturbing in the moment. You pocket it. I'll just pocket it and walk away. Okay. Pocket it, walk it. You will I'm pocket it and walk, walk it. down the rest of the alleyway, um, the streets. This part are starting to get a little busy. People you can see crossing the path. Uh, there's a shadow huh? at the edge of the end of the alleyway. Uh -huh. Like a, a figure kind of leaning against the wall. Same figure as does before. It say, does it look familiar? This is not the figure you saw. This is a humanoid figure, but much smaller. Maybe about Orem size, even shorter. You see a faint hunch to it as it just kind of sits there, arms crossed, waving. I don't trust it. Can I send out a, a message to it? Ooh, is that stupid? Like you can see it. Do you need something? Oh! Travis, you want to come up God, it finally stopped texting us. Jeez. <laughs> I know, I was like, where'd he go? What? Who is that? Oh no. Oh. Who's speaking, please? It's, oh no. No, no. <laughs> and I just wave over here. How are you doing that? <laughs> Same way you're doing it to me. Mind powers. That's nifty. I just walk over to him. <laughs> uh, Imogen? Uh, yeah. You see post up against the wall, uh, cloak and hood pulled over uh, his head. You see <laughs> tufts of silvery gray hair shooting out over his ears. Some silvery gray hair shooting out of his ears. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice little knit beanie cap pulled tight with little ear straps. Uh, he's got a leather chest harness and uh, some Pretty muscly, sinewed arms, along with some looks to be woodworking tools <laughs> from his hips and waist, uh, and and some nicely uh, pointy-toed boots. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly what age? Is it? From a visual perspective? Oh, probably somewhere around 100, 120, 100 and something years old. <laughs> what kind of height are we talking about? I'm short, motherfucker. Short. <laughs> <laughs> I'm three three. Where you at? I think I got you by an inch or so. Oh. I'm looking down. Who are you? Who are you? Are you one of the contractors? I see you have woodworking tools. No, I, I am. I, I like working with wood very much. No, I am. Um, I saw around the corner all of you handle whatever that was. You decided to just stand there and not come help? Well, fuck yes! I think I had tendrils, and all of a sudden you were there, and you whack, got pulled in, and you got spit back out, and then he's fucking face down in the middle of the street. Fair. Fair. Um, do you do this regularly? Are you looking for work? No, I'm just kidding. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> right. do, you, do you know a patron? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I could use some help. Um, oh, you need something. Well, 
Yes. Um, I need help finding someone. What's your name, friend? My name is Chetney. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again. It sounded like you said ch Chet. Chetney. 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 Pockapi is my name. Pockapi. Fresh cut grass. Pleased to meet you. The whole thing's your name? Oh, no, just the fresh cut grass part. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> what a fucking name. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I would actually love to come with you. That, that's all right. Yeah, you hungry, Grandfather? Come get a drink with us. We can, you know, that would be most see kind. what you're about. That would be very, very kind to do it. All right. Mm. Whatever gets us there faster. Let's just go. <laughs> I go, I go Here, you, you walk first. I, I don't want to trip on your booties. And you see me just... <laughs> As the the older gnomish odd companion begins to dart out into the night before you as your tired, wounded, bruised selves follow suit to make your way towards the Spire by Fire. We're going to finish tonight's game there. We'll pick up there next week. <laughs>